In this video, we're going to cover the Duplicolor Paint Shop Lacquer Paints and how to do candy apple red paint. So stay tuned. We think we can give you some real good tips. See you in just a few moments. understanding of why it's not like other paints, for example. When automobiles were first coming into existence, they had to come up with a way, obviously, to paint the bodies of the cars. What they did initially is they took what they had learned in making carriages and applied it to automobiles. Early cars utilized varnish finishes because that's what they were used to in the carriage trade. The way a varnish finish worked is it was put on with a brush and then they would let the car body dry for days to weeks depending on the time of the year and the temperature of the building it was in. Once it was dry they hand rubbed it down with pumice in order to make it smooth and then they put another coat of varnish on and repeat the process of letting it dry and hand rubbing it with pumice. This went on multiple times. The final coat of varnish finish was called flowing varnish and was put on by somebody that was particularly adept at it. Only the best of the best could do this because there couldn't be any brush marks when they're done and the flowing varnish was not rubbed out. The result of this is an absolutely beautiful paint job that lasts six months to a year and then cracks in a million little cracks. And the colors are still there, etc but it no longer looks gorgeous like when the day it was made. But this is what they had at the time. They didn't have other paints largely to work on their early automobiles with. When Ford was actually painting his cars for an assembly line, the only paint available besides this varnish finish style of paint was Japan Black. That was the only thing that dried fast enough to use on an assembly line. So when Ford said you can have any color as long as it's black, it's because that's all that would drive fast enough for his assembly line. So they used something called Japan Black. So you had these fancy varnish finishes and you had Japan Black. One gave you all the colors, but it took months. Factories used to have floors, and they used to be multiple story buildings with floors just dedicated to drying the bodies. Well, this isn't going to work for mass production very easily at all. That's why, as I said, Ford was black. So what did you do? Well, the DuPont Corporation came up with, in the 1920s, what was known as nitrocellulose lacquer paint. Lacquer paint had a whole lot of advantages over traditional painting systems. Obviously, the varnish was not very productive, even though it provided the colors, and black was the only thing over at Ford. Well, lacquer-colored paint by DuPont came in all those colors that the varnishes came in, but lacquer paint dries really fast. A coat of lacquer paint can dry to the touch in about 10 minutes. Faster if the temperature is a little higher, a little slower if it's a little bit colder, but basically that's a 10 minute process. Lacquer paint sticks to itself. So once you've had your initial metal surface with a key on it where you sanded it just to scratch it, you can put on lacquer primer, followed by lacquer color coats, and followed by if you're using, for example, in the, du in the uh, Duplicolor system, clear coat, a clear coat to finish with. All lacquer coats stick directly to the preceding coat. They can be recoated at any time with lacquer paint. This made the paint possible from the speed of the drying, the fact that you could have colors, and the fact that you could always recoat it very easy and useful in automotive production. It's also very beneficial to you if you're going to use it at home. Now I'm going to talk a little bit before we get into how to do this about what the pros and cons are of the paint. One of the greatest pros I already mentioned, it dries really fast. So that's great if you're working at home and you have to paint outdoors maybe, because that's really the only place you have to paint. Well, you paint outdoors, it's dry in 10 minutes. You don't have the problem of a bug coming along and jumping into it. Well, you could, but it doesn't have a lot of time. But if he does jump into it, you can still fix it because that's another pro of lacquer paint. You can wait like 30 minutes or an hour 
sand out the bug flaw, and you can spray right over it. And that's another pro of lacquer paint. It sticks to itself. And you don't have to sand the whole thing. It's just going to stick to the preceding layer. So that actually works with lacquer paint. So those are some real pros you've got to work with when using it at home. That's one of the reasons I'm going to use it. Now another reason I'm going to use it is because it is something that isn't all that expensive. Compared to many of the modern catalyzed paints, you can spend, if you go check it out, up to $1,000 for a gallon of clear real easy in some of the modern fancy catalyzed paints. Lacquer paint is infinitely cheaper. Yes, you're using a system that is embedded in the 1920s. Although it is not nitrocellulose based now, it is still a lacquer paint. And so it may be a very old tech, but it's also relatively inexpensive. Now, though, there are also some cons to it. And some of it's sort of a pro and con. Let's look at a pro and con. When you get done spraying, spraying multiple coats of lacquer paint, one of the problems you're going to run into is lacquer must be color sanded and buffed. So that's sort of a con, but most of the catalyzed paints are being color sanded and buffed now too. So is it really that much of a con? I don't think so, because you can make a beautiful shine out of it at home yourself easily by following through with the color sanding and buffing. But there are some definite cons. One of the cons is, is it's not going to hold up quite as well as a modern plasticized paint. That doesn't mean it's not going to hold up. It just means a modern plasticized paint, when you have a catalyzed paint, that's really sort of a liquid plastic you're spraying, tends to stretch and contract better. So over time, eventually, lacquer can form cracks, eventually. This isn't going to happen in six months or a year or several years under most circumstances, but it will eventually happen. However, again, as I said, a lacquer can be coated right over itself. This makes it possible to fix that in the future. But it is somewhat of a con. Another reality is, is it might be a little lower on total UV protection, even with the clear coat. But it depends on what clear coats you're buying for the catalyzed paints. Some of the clear coats you're buying, if they're cheap, they're pretty much not any better than the lacquer stuff at all. So, what's the difference? If you're willing to spend a huge amount of money on a catalyzed clear coat, like $1,000 a gallon, yes, it's going to overperform this. But most people don't want to spend 1000 bucks for a gallon of clear coat, I don't. So we're not going to do that. That is something you have to take into consideration. But this is something you can do at home in the driveway, whereas that clear coat paint's going to have the problem with bugs, etc. It's very hard to use in the driveway, for example, or in your garage. Let's look at something else. Another real con of a lacquer-based paint is that if it's too high humidity, yes, you can still get blush in it, meaning that it can absorb humidity from the air and be permanently cloudy. So you've got to take into consideration high humidity days are not the best days to spray lacquer. Another reality of lacquer is there's a window where they'll tell you it works temperature-wise. Honestly, you can spray it way below the temperature, they say, way above the temperature, they say. If you're way below, you have to move faster with your gun because you will not be evaporating as fast. That could lead to runs. If you're way above, it can get a pebble finish, so you have to slow the gun application down. Now, I'll still tell you way above. At some point, you're not going to want to do it because it's going to become pebbly, and there's not much you can do about that. You know, spinning it out is not going to make it last longer because lacquer just evaporates fast. So there are some considerations to take into reality when you're going to use it. But now I'm going to show you, step by step, how you would use it on your project by doing the door off of the glove box in our 1976 C10. Because we're going to do that vehicle in candy apple red and white with a metallic mixed into it. So here we go with that portion of the video. What you'll find when you're dealing with these Duplicolor paints is they're going to come in quart cans. They're pre-mixed. Theoretically, you're going to do nothing at all other than make sure they're stirred up and you're going to be able to spray them. Under most circumstances, I'm going to tell you that's going to be true. One of the things they're going to tell you is you've got to use their lacquer-based primer underneath it. That's not true. Any lacquer-based primer underneath it will work fine. Lacquer sticks to lacquer. You can put a different primer underneath it. For example, 
if you wanted to, you could use an epoxy primer because an epoxy primer will seal up your object from the weather and then you could put the lacquer over it. However, you need to key your epoxy primer and I would really put in a coat of, a, of lacquer primer before I put on the top coats. To do the candy coat system that they've got here, we're going to be using three different products. This is actually the top coat, the gloss clear coat. That's the last coat in the color stage. There is a coat of silver that is made specifically for doing the candy surface. And that is called candy base coat. Amazingly simple, huh? So this is the candy base coat. So that's what you're going to start with after your primer, followed by using your candy coat. In this case, we're going to use candy apple red. Hand got a little bit in it when it was shipped to us, but we're going to use candy apple red. And then the finished coat is the clear that I was holding up in the first place. So you have three color coats that you're actually going to have to use with this over your original primer. Remember, if you use a primer other than the lacquer primer, be sure to key that, add the lacquer primer, then go through your steps with your color coats. Now what I'm going to do is grab the door off of the truck, and we're going to bring it here, and we're going to start the actual literal process of applying paint. All right, we have our glove box door here disassembled. We have our cake pan with water and a little Dawn dish soap and we have 320 sandpaper and we also have a sanding block that I'm going to use in a moment. Your 320 wet sandpaper though will do a good job on whatever you've got on paint here. Now we're going to try something because I don't really know what paint this is. You know I could strip it all off but I'm actually going to sand it and I'm going to spray it with the lacquer primer over it and see if we get a reaction. If we don't we'll go from there. If we do, well, as I said, I could take it all off, but I don't want to go to that much trouble right now because this quite possibly is, in fact, a lacquer finish, but we'll find out by testing it with our lacquer primer, which won't get us into wasting our color coats. So I'm going to go through and sand this all off and get it lacquer primer and be back with you. All right. I have on a crummy sweatshirt because it's out painting, priming, that is, this particular piece. And yes, the lacquer primer went on just fine, no reaction whatsoever. So we're probably actually dealing with the lacquer surface. And it's been primed and sanded. There are a few minor spots. I'm going to do a little more prime work and sand it. Then we're going to be ready for our first color coat, which is going to be the background, the base for the candy coat. And that's the silver candy coat base. But first, I'm going to finish up with just a little bit more primer. As you can see, there's some spots where I've sanded through, that sort of thing. All right, I've used a different product this time and sprayed it on here because I was just touching up little spots. Now, there's some overall, but mostly touched up in certain spots. What I use? I use Krylon Gray Primer out of a spray can. It'll work just fine. It'll be fine underneath the Duplicolor lacquer, but that is just straight gray primer. Don't use this paint and with primer combination Krylon's got, you will have problems. It is not going to be compatible, but the gray primer will be compatible. So it's just straight gray primer. It's great for little touch-up jobs that you might have around. And as I said, it'll work fine underneath the lacquer. Then you can look over it. I noticed I got a couple little teeny pieces of dust that I'm going to take out with 320. Then I'm going to be ready for the silver, as I said, the silver base coat for the candy apple red. And we'll be spraying that on. Now, you might be wondering what I'm using for pressures for spraying the lacquer. I thin it down so it is fairly thin even when it's primer. Probably like can pancake batter. And then I'm spraying at 60 pounds on the line and adjusting the gun, which is an HVLP gun, into the green range on its actual uh, little adjustment right on the gun. So I adjust it for the green range, but I use about 60 on the line. That tends to work for me. Different guns are going to be totally different, and different setups will be different. So you will have to set up for your particular system. That's just what I happen to use. When you're going to apply your candy base coat. A couple of things. They do give you instructions back here. And they're telling you 30 to 40 pounds when you have a normal gun, 10 to 20 PSI and HVLP spray gun. 
I'm still going to follow what I said. I said about 60 on the line. I adjusted the gun. I am using an HBLP gun when I actually spray. Now, something else to keep in mind, when you're going to spray, because this is a metallic, you want to be about 12 to 14 inches away. Spray back and forth all the way across your entire piece. Come back, go the opposite direction. And third, go at an angle, all the time being 12 to 14 inches away. If you don't do that and you get too close, you're going to find out you'll make what is known as tiger stripes. And you'll see those through the candy coat. So you want an even coat, keeping 12 to 14 inches away when you're spraying. And as I said, go across this way, then go this way, and in a diagonal for a finish. And you should turn out really good and nice and even. Also remember, you have to do your back sides. And back sides are better done before you get onto the top so that you have that all finished up. I'm not going to go set this camera by the spraying area and the reason I'm not going to is I'll get it all over the camera. So I'm not going to do that, but that's the pattern I'm going to use this way first, this way second, diagonal third, staying 12 to 14 inches away. And I'm going to spray the paint as it is mixed here. I will use a strainer on it just in case because you want uniformity, particularly since we're dealing with a coat that has metallic in it. We want it to be as uniform as possible. So that's what I'm going to go do. Then I'll show you it once it's been sprayed that way. There we have our silver here that we're going to be roughly using shortly. And a few things to keep in mind with it. Between coats, always use a tap rag. Also, if when you're spraying it, you start to get strings, which you should test in the first place, increase your line pressure, maybe 10 to 20 pounds. Tend to get rid of the strings because you don't want those. Here we have the door now with one complete coat of candy apple red on it. We're going to put on at least one more, maybe two. It's been done on the back first, on the front second. You want to get a nice even coat of the candy apple red. As I said, we're definitely going to do at least two coats. And I notice it's for you, it's in the shade, but I don't want to move it around out in the sun because it's set up for spraying again. So we're going to spray the next coat and get back with you on that. One thing I have to note though, when you're doing this, be sure that you clean the gun super well between the silver and the candy red because that silver wants to stick to everything. Absolutely be very very thorough in cleaning that gun before you go to candy red all right here we are back with it in the sun so you can see what it looks like there's two nice even coats of the red done just the way we described the silver where we started left to right then top to bottom and then diagonally for a finish it looks great with two coats so that's what we're going to leave next we'll add the clear now clear is much easier because you don't have to worry about tiger striping the clear. All you want is nice even coats. The only thing to keep in mind, you want a minimum of three coats because you're going to have to color sand it out. If you think you're going to do a fair amount of color sanding, you might want to go as many as six, but minimum of three coats. Well, here we have the finished door the following day after it's sat. And you can see by the lighting on there that there's about the level of orange peel that I was telling you you're going to get. You can color sand it out and polish it, which would be the finishing step. If you were dealing with like a door jam, you'd just leave it this way. It'd be the way the factory would have left it anyway. That'd be just fine. But it turned out just beautiful, I think. So we're gonna color sand and polish it. Hopefully it's given you a few tips on how you can use this painting system. And as I said, it's something that you can touch up yourself really easy. And it's great for working at home, especially if you don't have a paint booth.